Hi guys and welcome to the first episode, Football Manager 2019 now has dropped. We are only on the beta build, but let's be honest, the beta builds are always pretty much the same as the full release. Now, tactics screen this season looks quite a bit different. Uh, you start by choosing a tactical style. It's kind of like a like a setup wizard, I suppose, in the sense that it gives you all these um, pardon me, different styles you can play. So you can go for controlling possession, Gigan press, I would say that is, which I well, don't really know what that is. Uh, tiki Taka, vertical Tiki Taka, wing play, route one, fluid counter attack, direct counter attack. God, why did I read these? Catenaccio, uh, which seems to be some sort of park the bus type thing. Uh, then there is actual park the bus, or you can create your own style from scratch. Let's try these wizard things, right? Because I've never really used these properly. I've never really played around with these so far. I've had a couple of games uh, playing as Man City and stuff offline just to prepare myself. But let's dive right in. We'll try and control possession. Let's go for that. Um, this gives us a little idea of what it's going to look like, knocking the ball around. Try to look for openings, and there you go, getting through there, through there, through the middle, in one on one bang, that, that kind of idea, right? Uh, so that will give us a positive mentality in possession. We will do it in shorter passing, playing out of defence, working the ball into the box in a slightly lower tempo. In transition, uh, the goalkeeper will be taking short kicks, he will distribute it to the centre backs, and when we win the ball back, this in transition thing is just like when you win the ball back, like a turnover of possession type thing. So we will be counter uh, pressing when they pinch the ball off us, we'll be counter-pressing them, just getting right in their faces to try and take it back quickly. When we're out of possession, we'll be playing with a high defensive line, a high line of engagement, which basically is just we're going to close them down higher up the pitch, more urgent uh, in our closing down, and we'll be uh, pressuring the goalkeeper. So let's go with that. Formations, we can do a 4-2-3-1, we can do a 4-1-4-1, we can do a 5-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-1. I think we'll go for a 4-2-3-1 at the moment. We'll be playing with a ball-winning midfielder and a regular uh, centre midfielder. Advanced playmaker, attack, getting up to the defensive line forward, an inside forward on the left and a winger on the right. I don't know why it's picked it that way around, but there you go. I'm sure we can play with that. Um, so let, let's pick the squad. We've got two other tactics, obviously, that'll be the backup tactics to set up. But basically, for now, let's just take a look at the squad selection. So we'll have a sweeper keeper. That will be Alan McGregor, who has four stars. He's considerably better than Wes Fodringham, according to the game. I would say in real life, it's probably a bit closer. I would say McGregor definitely is better than Wes Fodringham. But I think it's a bit harsh to say that Wes Fodringham is so far beneath Alan McGregor, but we will be playing, as I say, with Alan McGregor. Our right wing back, obviously, is going to be Tavernier. The centre back pairing will be Connor Goldson and probably Katic. Who are the other options, though? That's Gareth McCauley, what's he like? See the old boy? He is 38 years of age. Um, he looks okay, but I don't think we're going to be using him. And Joe Worrell, how is he? Loney, of course, 21 years of age. Pretty decent player, but not particularly great. I think it will be Goldson and Katic. Ross McCrory also an option, but we can also look to play him in a defensive midfielder role in another tactic. Uh, our left wing back will be Borna Barisic. He's a pretty damn good player here. I actually think he is quite decent in real life, I will admit. Uh, centre midfielder here in the supporting role. How long are Dorans and Rosa are out? Three to four months and three to four months. Great. So Ryan Jack will be playing that role. And the ball winning midfielder, Las Koulibaly, seems to be the best in that role. Uh, I think they need to be brighter, the guys who are on loan at you. Because there's not much difference between how Koulibaly looks and how Doherty looks. Obviously Doherty being on loan from somewhere else and uh, Koulibaly being on loan at Rangers from Angers by the looks of it. He looks a decent player, he can tackle, he's got a bit of work rate, some fitness and stamina as well, so we'll put him in there, see how he goes. Uh, a right winger here, Gresda, is injured for two to three months. Uh, Daniel Candeas is there, he's wanted, and he's actually transfer listed, which I find a bit weird. I will take him off the transfer list. There we go, take him off that. Uh, so Candeas is out there, Arfield's another option as well. Uh, on the left, uh, sorry, in the middle, the advanced playmaker, Ejaria, seems to be the best at that. The Liverpool, uh, on loan Liverpool lad. 
you get a good first touch, he can dribble, good technique, decent pass, good vision on him. So he's an alright player in there as well. Uh, his finishing's a bit dodgy though. Uh, inside forward off the left hand side, Jamie Murphy would be the better at that, but he's injured for, Jesus, for 13 to 14 months, Christ almighty. Uh, Ryan Kent, I suppose, can play that role, but would he rather be a winger? He would rather be a winger. Let's just let him be a winger. We'll play wingers both sides. Uh, the individual instructions here are pretty much the same. Uh, Kent is a left winger. Looks pretty decent. He's either footed. That's nice as well. Um, and up front, of course, our deep line forward is going to be Alfredo Morelos. Kyle Lafferty actually is just as good, according to this. Uh, Umar Sadiq is not very good at all. So Morelos can play that role. How does he look this year? Pfft, looks pretty damn decent again. He's got 19 strength. Jesus Christ. When he say he was that strong? Um, nonetheless, so the bench will be looking at Fodringham, McCauley, Worrell, Flanagan, McCrory. This is obviously for the friendly games. Wallace, two months as well. Bloody hell. We've got enough injuries here. Uh, Doran's, let's see. Arfield, Lafferty and Sadiq then. We've got quite a few injuries to be dealing with. Uh, how does Umar Sadiq look? Um, he's a big unit. You know, if we're chasing a game or something, we could maybe throw the ball up to him and see if he can flick it on or something, but he doesn't look particularly great. Kyle Lafferty, he's a useful player. I think he could be alright for a season or two. Arfield is a good player, but just not as good as a, you know, a wide, I don't like a wide player, like a, a wide playmaker type who does need I don't think runabout's the right way to put it, but you know what I mean? I like my wingers to be pacey wingers who get in, the, in about you and run that. Yeah, I don't like this kind of wide playmaker thing, so I don't know. Our field might have limited time unless we just make our field uh, train to be that central midfield support role. Let's try that, because I don't see any reason why he couldn't. Uh, oops. Accidentally Does that to report a bug there. Um, where are we? Right, the reserves. Let's see if there's MD down here. Of any note. Uh, oh, Barjonas is here. Where's he? He's away to Berry on loan. Okay. Uh, we've got Glenn Middleton here, 18 years of age. Uh, just signed from Norwich. I actually thought he was on loan in real life. I'm interested to see that Rangers have actually signed him. He's a winger on the left hand side. Definitely want to call him up. 18 years of age. Looks a cracker of a player. Definitely get him up. Jordan Houston as well, obviously a lot of people will remember him from our Foot Manager 2018 Rangers uh, series, so we're definitely going to be bringing him into the fray. Everybody else, not particularly great. I mean, young Jack Thompson looks alright. Robbie McCrory, the goalkeeper, still has potential, but he needs a lot of work. The under-18s, Dapo Mabudi is still down there. A good player, but definitely needs to go out on loan. I mean, maybe even have a season or two in the unders. He's got no pace this time. Ten pace is pretty poor. Um, Danny Finlayson is here as well. Currently listed for loan. Again, looks okay. Player has been in the game for a number of years, but everybody else pretty much just looks okay at best. Uh, looking at the reserves, anybody else we recognise? There's Zach Rudden here who he looks okay again. Andy Halliday is actually down here as a ball-winning midfielder. I think there's a there's a utility for Andy Halliday in the squad. Uh, what about sorting them by value? Nah, Rob, Robbie McCrory is probably the best one there. So that's us set up with our main tactic. Let's look at another couple. And again, we'll use this thing just to see if we can get anything out of it. Uh, we'll go for a fluid counter-attack. That's perhaps how we'll play, I think, against Celtic. Uh, we'll be going with, uh, have as a cautious mentality there. Shorter passing with a slightly higher tempo and playing narrower to try and uh, force them out wide with a ball which might actually bite us with Big Odds and Edward being their main striker but in transition the goalkeeper will distribute quickly we will counter them as quickly as we can and we'll counter press when they win the ball back from us we're out of possession we'll be narrow our defensive line will be dropping deeper lower line of engagement so we'll basically let them play with it in their own half uh, we will be more urgent and getting stuck in about them as well uh, so a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-4-1-1 or a 5-3-2 hmm that's tricky 
I think Celtic are more likely to play with one up front, so I think three centre backs would be a waste. I think, hmm, I think the four four one one, but I'm gonna actually change it to a four four two. I think. Uh, in fact, there we go. Four four two. We'll go with that. I do. I, um, I will go with that. Four four two. So we can launch it up to Lafferty and uh, Morelos up front there, and we will also <clears throat> because we have Europe, we will go for a Catanaccio which is de looking to nullify the opposition's attacking threat, highly structured defensive approach. We're going to go for that in Europe, I think. The mentality there will be defensive. When we get the ball, more direct passing, play for set pieces, try to load the box and so forth, which kind of sounds like diving, to be honest. Um, be more disciplined, extremely low tempo, which I find a, a bit interesting. You'd think we'd be trying to punt the ball. Uh, we're playing very narrow and we will be trying to waste time. In transition, we'll try and slow the pace down and regroup. Uh, eh, sorry, encounter. We'll be trying to regroup when they win the ball off us. Out of possession, defending narrower, dropping deeper, and tightly marking our men. So let's go for that one. Um, I think, yeah, I think that looks pretty decent there. A 5 1 2 2, basically a 3 3 2 2, by my reading of that. But we'll go with that one. Uh, and that will obviously be our most defensive approach but our main tactic is going to be this 4 2 3 one where we're trying to get in about them and attack them uh, naturally it's now swapped everybody about the place there we go so it'll be McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Barisic, Jack, Koulibaly, Kandias, Ijaria, Kent and Morelos that will be the team that we go with uh, scouting wise just in terms of taking a look at a couple of people Darren Fletcher at Stoke would be a good sign apparently but 35 and a half grand to 47 grand I don't think so we have a 1.8 million transfer budget and a 16 grand uh, wiggle bit of wiggle room there in the wage budget so we've got a little tiny bit of money but not much at all uh, is there anybody on the transfer list that we would look to pick up let's see uh, like some Matt Phillips I would definitely loan Matt Phillips but uh, whether we could actually afford to buy him or not is obviously another matter Connor Wickham as well definitely better than uh, Sadiq up front he'd be a good unit for us but I think most of these guys are just not going to be able to afford them um, Joey Pelopese the midfielder there at Sheffield Wednesday looks a pretty decent player 2.7 million is richer than we could afford but I think we could maybe loan him I don't know Alexander Esfine Hertha's a pretty decent player as well he's got a lot of pace which we could certainly use again we'll scout him 2.4 we probably can't afford let's go down a little oh was that Sonia Luko it is indeed Sonia Luko uh, 2.1 million again would still be a good player uh, Brandon Muir Hergota is a pretty damn good player what was he 1.7 I think we have 1.8 am I right in saying yeah we do we could possibly afford him and he looks a pretty good player uh, Havard Nielsen's another one. Mm, he's not quite as good. Jacob Blazikowski is on 43 grand. There's no way we'll be getting him. Uh, I'm just pretty much just trolling through players here and seeing if anybody stands out. There's Charlie Adam there. Still looks a good player, but physically absolutely destroyed at this point in his career. Luciano Nalsing at Swansea's another, but again, he's on 24 grand there. Uh, but anyway, to pick him up at 425k would possibly make it worthwhile. He would be a good signing, apparently. He's behind Gresda and Candias. Uh, when Gresda comes back, I think he'll definitely be a good lad for us. And Candias is decent, so I don't really think we need to strength on that left hand side. Um. Oh, what I will take a look at is this boy, young Michael Fowler at Burnley. Get a scout report on him, see if there's any chance we can actually approach the sign. Uh, he might not look like much, but in Football Manager 2018, this boy became an absolute monster of a player if you used him. Let's see if he'd talk to us. Nah, yeah, well, that's a shame. Uh, right. We round up of the window here. Biggest spenders range is at 10.5 million. Celtic obviously signed Odson Edward, who in this game is a lot better. He is considered a wonder kid now, so he is going to be an absolute nuisance for us to deal with. Um, they've also signed Malumbu, who's worth 7 million. 
and would easily get a game in our squad even though he's going to be a backup player for Celtic probably so we'll advance it a little bit but we'll probably call this episode uh, like an intro episode slash tactical introduction to the game and a little overview of the squad uh, so in the league this is what the expectations are Europa Cup qualifier basically coming second uh, or even third I think would be okay or I think even fourth would meet that expectation or winner we pick winner we get an extra 200 grand and we get a 30 grand or something in the wage bill it's not quite worth it reach the final of the cup we can go to winner and we get a wee bit of chump change chump change if you put the Europa expectation up and chump change again if you put the bet thread up I think we'll just leave everything where it is I don't want to pick winner I would I would pick title challenge if we could but I'm not going to pick winner just in case uh, we'll leave everything where it is expecting the group stage of the Europa I think is quite harsh because you never know we could get an absolute stinker of a qualifying draw um, squad dynamics let's introduce ourselves to the squad I'd like to introduce us to the new Rangers manager we're going to go and win the title this season oh come on they think we're too ambitious ok fine I'm getting carried away but we at least want to qualify fine I think that's a bit crap I think everybody in the Rangers dressing room should be looking to win the title do you know what? We'll play the Dumbarton friendly. Why not? I'm not usually one for playing friendlies. I usually give it to the assistant. But considering we're up against Dumbarton, want to look at the new match engine maybe. Let's do it. Let's let's play the Dumbarton game. Uh, all these pre-tactical briefings and all that are still just dull as all hell. So we're going to ignore them. Uh, but we will, as I say, play them batten. So going into this game, the squad is selected. Middleton is also going to join us on the bench here, let's bump him up a little bit, who else did I promote, Halliday as well, will come in and join us, you can go, you can just slot in behind Arfield there, Jordan Houston as well, brought him up, he can come up here, like getting my bench all nice and arranged, he can pop up there next to Flanagan, and that is it, we have an 11 man bench out of the 10, and we will advance into the game so as I say we're playing controlling possession looking to pass the ball about control the game work it into the box let's see how we go as I say just experimenting with the pre-made tactics that the game gives us want to see if the, the tactical builder thing there is any good or if it ends up being a complete waste of time passionately we're favourites for a reason go out leaving nobody in any doubt as to why we're the favourites for this game and we've got stuck right in we want to change this to take replays off we want to go at a slightly faster pace and we want to motor through in between highlights go down to key highlights as well and that should give us a decent bit of action Kandias corner quickly headed down oh and K eh, sorry Katic with a bit of a howl and miss this we want to change to Dumbarton formation so we can analyse any changes they make and we'll just set this to latest scores right now and let's encourage the boys see what I do like about 2019 as well is this body language Kandias gets fired up by the feedback so this actually lets you know how they're reacting to your in-match shouts which is a lot better than previously where you were kind of guessing Kandias corner number 2 in Heatherway Back to Candias, crosses it better to Morelos, 1-0. Picking up where he left off in Football Manager 18, Alfredo Morelos, 1-0 already. Okay, it's Dumbarton, but still, it is a nice start to the game. The controlling possession seems to be working well. We're up there at high 60s uh, in terms of possession. We were above 70% until recently. Candias with another free kick, lofts it towards Katic. Overhit, though, back to Jack. Space to bend one. Goes back out to Kandias, teasing the defence. Cross to Flex, it's an easy save in the end for the goalkeeper. But I don't like the fact that Ryan Jack wouldn't have hit that when he had acres of space to hit it. Uh, Kandias has crossed, poor again, cleared out into touch. I'm hoping this match engine is actually recording as smoothly as 2018 did. Uh, obviously this is the first time I'm recording a match on this, so if it's laggy as all hell or something, then that would suck. Banasic in, header in by Ryan Kent. How tall is he? Because he's won two headers now. Is he a tall lad? Where is he? Ryan Kent. No, he's a wee short arse. Koulibaly. Ejaria. Jack. Out wide to Kandias. More space again. The narrow back three. Really hunting the buttons. Morelos hits the post. And it is all Rangers pressure here. Kandias with another corner. Floats it in. Headed by Katic. Easy enough for Adam. 
in the Dumbarton goal to take hold of. Absolutely bossing it, as we would expect. Adam with a goal kick for Dumbarton here. Goes long, commanding error by Goldson to Morelos. Oh, it's a shocking pass, though. Peyton easily intercepts. Dowie back to Peyton. Uh, Ballantyne to Forbes. Over the top, easy, though, for Nikola Katic to drop deep. Gets it back to Alan McGregor. Back to Katic and Goldson as we play out at the back. Forward to Jack. Out to Kandias. Bit loose. Their passing looks a bit looser this time. Uh, than it did in 1818 18, it seemed to be like a homing missile going right to the players feet whereas this one they're a bit sloppier Jack out wide Barisic to cross cuts it back Koulibaly Jack with space to hit one this time he does Oofed. and there's why we wanted him to hit one what a hit Ryan Jack assisted by Lasana Koulibaly and it is 3-0 before the break job done good performance to start off with I won't play all the friendlies I just wanted to show off a game in episode 1 here uh, very pleased with how we're going lads uh, unless you want to see all the friendlies by the way by all means if you want to see all the friendlies comment below and by all means I will play them all it's just I don't generally find that it's that exciting to sit and watch us play meaningless friendlies uh, Flanagan will come on for Barisic at left back Tavernier will come on for Jordan Houston given a run out here Ross McCrory I will actually bring in for Koulibaly I'm going to train Ross McCrory to be a central midfielder uh, where are we? Uh, yep, rolling duty, central midfielder, ball winning midfielder, defend. Absolutely, we'll train him to do that. That's the role he's playing at the minute. Andy Halliday mm, probably won't get a game just now. Arfield is on for Jack in the position that we're training him to do as well. Middleton replaces Kent. Kyle Lafferty replaces Morelos. Halliday and Sadiq are not going to be able to play today. Let's see how a lot of these subs get on here. I'm particularly, particularly interested in how Arfield uh, develops playing as a central midfielder there because we're kind of changing his position there from being somebody who mainly operates out wide to somebody who operates in the middle. Uh, and he's 29 years of age, so let's see how he adapts as it's whipped in towards Lafferty. Lafferty goes down for a penalty. Typical Kyle Lafferty diving for a penalty, <laughs> which he will himself take into the corner. Lovely finish for nothing. He looks like a big lanky lump of a player here, which is pretty cool. And football managers gone past, you had a big lanky guy and he was like a wee stocky guy on the match uh, engine, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Flanagan, Waddle, Flanagan, into McCrory, back to Flanagan, into Arfield. Lovely pass and pinging it around here. Middleton, we haven't given De Martin a sniff. Ejaria, Arfield opening up a bit. Hits one! Jesus Christ, what a hit! McGowan apparently saved it. The match engine looked a wee bit wobbly there. Uh, the goalkeeper just kind of fell down and then the ball bounced into the into the sky but oof the curve on that ball there when he hit that shot as well very nice physics on this match engine Candias is pretty knackered out there but can't really swap him for anyone Houston Lafferty Candias got to tee somebody up there Arfield back out to Flanagan get it whipped in so Arfield in the volley cracks the bar what a hit that is it looks like this uh controlling possession tactic is going to open up space on the edge of the box so perhaps long term we look for somebody who's got good long shots it's a good challenge there by old man Macaulay obviously we've already seen Ryan Jack scoring an absolute belter from the edge of the box Candias with a free kick now just wide of the mark it looks like we're going to run out here 4-0 winners 67% possession and about what 23 shots or something it was to Dumbarton's 1 22 shots to Dumbarton's 1 they had 11 fills we had 7 2 bookings for them none for us 9 on target out of the 22 and of course we restricted them to no shots on target so a good game overall for us nice way to start off hope that gave a good indication of the match engine how it looks how it performs and obviously an idea of the squad one to two days of bruised foot for Candias isn't bad I do think uh, it seems to be more frequently that you're picking up injuries in this game uh, I don't particularly like the way the tactics is arranged this time the actual pitch was always on the left and the selection was always uh, sorry the actual pitch was always on the right and the selection was always on the left so why did they change it I don't really know it seems like one of those things to change something for changing its sake so it looks a lot different than, than FM18 maybe to trick isn't I think they changed more than they did I don't particularly like it uh, we're, we're starting that Pataudry so it is real fixtures that you get uh, clearly when you're in the Scottish Premiership 
uh, and Celtic starting at home to Livingston, who they should absolutely decimate. Is Kenny Miller their manager at the start, I wonder? Uh, Gary Holt is their manager. Where is Kenny Miller as we start the game? Kenny Miller is a Dundee striker, so that's pretty good. He does have staff attributes as well. They are crap, which <laughs> didn't exactly do very well at Livingston, did he? So it seems to be fair that his, his stats are crap. But it, I think that's a pretty good intro to the series. We'll be going forward uh, in the next episode, probably against Coleraine. Coleraine, is that how you pronounce that? The Northern Irish team. Uh, as I say, I don't plan on playing the friendlies unless you guys give us feedback and say that you want to see the friendlies. Uh, the schedule here is split up into months, which is quite cool. It shows you you've played all those games in July, most of which are friendlies as well as the two qualifiers. August, we've only got those three games, but we will obviously hopefully be playing European games too, September. So it breaks it down quite nicely. Uh, also, you might have noticed in the calendar, uh, although it won't show us just now, if I continue, there's all these things like recovery, rest, match tactics, etc. That's to do with the training, which is a hell of a lot more complicated this year. One of the cool things is you can add a mentoring group. So we could do, let's do um, wing backs, just for example, right? Make that group. We can add players there. Three players can be add, uh, need to be added minimum. So we will add John Flanagan. We will add Jordan Houston. We will add James Tavernier. And we will add Lee Wallace, who at the minute is actually injured. And we will add Barisic, right? So as far as I understand, this is a group that should start training together, should start bonding together, and theoretically, Jordan Houston should start to pick up from these other players. Obviously, the more influential and the hierarchy, it seems the more influence they have in the group. So Jordan Houston, and I mean, I'm still experimenting with this, I don't know exactly how it works, but in theory, Jordan Houston, who will have light influence, and Barisic, who will have light influence, should pick up more traits from these other guys. So Jordan Houston there with three for determination. John Flanagan has 19 for determination. Lee Wallace has 11, which isn't great, but it's higher than Houston's. Um, uh, sorry that was Wallace and Tavernier has 13 so again so hopefully their determination will rub off on the other guys I'm just thinking about that I'm thinking it basically replaces tutoring because if you go into uh, Flanagan into development you can't see any tutoring there you know which obviously you would see uh, obviously he can't be tutored but he could be a tutor for someone else I don't know what happens if you click this tactics that just shows how good he is in different positions and stuff. So as I say, I'm still playing around with the, the training. It's it's very, very different. Uh, you can look at the calendar. You can assign training for a whole... Uh, let's find... So for example, we're playing a European game here. And this week... That would be the 9th through to the 15th of July. So you could change this. You could do a diff certain training styles. You could look at a scenario, big match preparation, which will change how it works and all that. Again, as I say, it's really quite in depth, and I'm no no there yet to be talking about it on a video. But uh, just know that it is different, and it's a lot bigger part of this game. It seems I like the idea uh, in theory that you can adjust your training. So, for example, if we drew someone ridiculous like. Um, like Arsenal or something like that in the Europa League and we're away to the Emirates we could in theory make most of our training that week structured around pure defensive positioning defensive shape maybe do one session on working set pieces in case we get a corner or something so in theory you can tell, tailor the training to that particular uh, scenario which I like but does it eventually as you play more just become an annoying thing that you need to keep going in and clicking on and change it you know what I mean is it is it that different like so if and I don't know this yet by the way I've not played with it enough yet but if we're coming up against Arsenal we don't need to worry too much about working on defending set pieces whereas if we come up against I don't know some big unit of a team like some big Mourinho team who's loading the box with all these big giants all the time then maybe you work on defending set pieces as well so I don't know is it that in depth or does it just become I've got a big game coming up let's drill defending all week I don't know as I say one of those things kind of like I hope it doesn't become like the pre-match tactical briefing where I just make the assistant manager do it all the time because it's just boring and repetitive. Kind of like the press conferences. Hope it doesn't end up like that. 
I fear that it might, but I don't know yet. So I'm going to give it a chance. It will develop as we play, and hopefully we will learn a bit more about it. But I'm not going to waffle on too much longer. This has been a half an hour long introductory episode. We've seen the squad. We've seen the new tactic system. We've played a game, albeit a friendly against Dumbarton. So listen, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We are going to be playing Football Manager 2019 now as Rangers. Um, and basically, we're just going to try and do what we did last season now. Yes, last season did kind of just end, but it was getting to the point where I mentioned uh, in previous videos last season that, you know, I'm going through some training and development and stuff and work right now that's taken, frankly, taken a lot of my time up, which is a giant pain in the arse, but I'll get a good chunk of money at the end of it. So, need to be plowing on with that. And also, interest kind of waned, to be honest, for me, when we were rocking these ridiculous Argentine players all the time, like Alberto Chiacheri. Uh, obviously, if you're a new player, you're absolutely tuning out now because I'm talking about last season and the type of regens we got and stuff. Uh, Alberto Chiacheri and Rodrigo Fassi and things like that, Christian Perez. These players were ludicrously good and we were just stomping the league all the time. So interest kind of waned for me a little bit. Plus, with the new game coming out, it just kind of tailed off. But listen, we're back. New football manager, new series. The only time I've ever actually done two series is the same team. But I know a lot of you subscribed for the Rangers series and I know you probably want to see a Rangers series here on Football Manager for 2019 so here it is like this video if you've enjoyed it subscribe please do that and all the good things sharing the video and so on and so forth tell your friends as they say but main, mainly I hope you guys have enjoyed it as I always say and I'll see you back here next time for probably for the Europa League qualifying game but if you guys want to see some friendlies then I'll probably come back and play them so I'll see you next time for that